Thanks to Linode Cloud Computing for supporting this episode of SciShow. You can go to linode.com slash scishow to learn more and get a $100 60-day credit on a new Linode account. No one can argue that the COVID-19 pandemic hasn't been extremely disruptive to our way of life. But the pandemic hasn't just affected us, it's also affected the environment. For example, on the one hand, increased demand for things like masks and gloves has unfortunately led to a lot of waste in the form of single-use plastics and other materials. On the other, decreased commuting led to a dip in emissions. And there have been a few knock-on effects, like changing the weather, which turns out to be a lucky natural experiment to help us understand just how much humans are affecting the world around us, up to and including lightning storms, pandemic or no. During the pandemic, especially its first year, the amount of lightning strikes over some parts of the world, especially Europe, Africa, and Asia, decreased. And several teams of researchers have chalked that up to improvements in air quality. Previous studies had shown that air quality improved over the course of the pandemic especially in 2020, the year when the greatest number of people stayed home. And based on what we understand, the amount of air pollution has direct consequences for lightning. That's because most air pollutants are aerosols, particles suspended in air. When water vapor encounters particles, it condenses around them, forming water drops. These drops, in turn, more readily form clouds. But the amount of aerosols in the atmosphere is key because it's this amount that determines whether the water will fall back down as rain. The the atmosphere is a really complicated system, and we don't fully understand everything that goes into making a rain cloud. However, we do know that aerosols in the atmosphere give water a place to condense. More aerosols lead to smaller droplets because there are more places for the water to go. This lends itself to a combination of very cool droplets and ice crystals, which tends to generate a lot of static. It is the perfect storm of conditions to create lightning. So basically, the more aerosols in the atmosphere, the more lightning strikes occur. Researchers documented a correlation between the two in real time in 2005 when a volcanic plume in the Philippines wafted a bunch of aerosols into the atmosphere just off the coast. Lightning strikes increased in the area soon after. And in 2017, researchers realized that lightning strikes happened more frequently over shipping lanes. These are areas of the ocean where cargo ships often pass through, sort of like roads across the sea. Ships pump out aerosols in their exhaust, and those aerosols linger in the atmosphere over those shipping lanes, so the increase increase in lightning is probably due to the increase in aerosols. Both of these studies looked at lightning strikes over the ocean, which are easier to study than lightning over land. That's because there are fewer factors to consider when looking at ocean lightning. After all, the ocean is mostly just featureless water, while land, on the other hand, has, like, factors that affect the weather. Things like topography and tree cover and seasonal changes can all affect the weather, and all of these can muddle the connection between aerosols and lightning strikes. For example, cities warm faster than rural areas in what's called the urban heat island effect. This is because cities tend to be made up of materials that retain more heat, like asphalt and concrete. Since temperature changes can affect rainfall as well, that means that rain over cities is already different from nearby rural areas, and that's even before thinking about climate change. That means we don't fully understand how much human-generated aerosols are affecting lightning strikes because we can't filter out all those other variables. Events like the pandemic, though, can bridge this gap, because we know that the only thing that changed over highly populated areas during the pandemic was aerosol concentration. Temperature and all the other things remained the same, so that suggests that at least some of the decrease in lightning strikes had to be due to aerosols. And that brings us one step closer to actually being able to say that air pollution over land leads to more lightning, and that reduced air pollution would mean fewer thunderstorms and lightning strikes. And that means that research like this plays a vital part in helping us untangle all of the different ways that humans are influencing the environment. This is still an open area of research, which means we have a lot of questions that we need to answer before we can understand these effects fully. We don't know whether different pollutants affect lightning differently, or how changing weather conditions can interact with these aerosols to produce different effects. But learning more can help help inform air pollution policies for reasons that go beyond just human health, and maybe could help us understand all of the strange ways that we influence the world we live in. This SciShow video is supported by Linode Cloud Computing. Not the kind of cloud that we were talking about in this video, just the kind of cloud that you find 
online. Even if you haven't heard of cloud computing, your daily life would be very different without it. At least, that's most likely true, based on the fact that you are watching a YouTube video right now. Cloud computing enables you to stream, host websites and apps, and store your data online. And Linode gives developers the power to do all of that with award-winning professional customer service representatives that will answer your questions 24-7, 365 days of the year. It doesn't matter where you are in the world, you can create a Linode server closest to you. And if you ever happen to need it, you can get support from a representative at convenient hours for your day. To get Linode working for you, click the link in the description or head to linode.com slash scishow, and that gives you a $100 60-day credit on a new Linode account. Thanks for watching this episode of SciShow, and thank you to Linode for supporting this video.